Hodge. This is the information session on nursing. My name is Connie Hotchkiss, and I'm the nursing division director here at the college. With me is Jane O'Grady, and I'll have her introduce herself. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming to visit with us. Um, I'm Jane O'Grady, and I'm pretty much allied health right up to nursing. So all of those other courses that you might think about, uh, medical assisting, um, anything to get you ready. And I'm here to help Connie tell you all about nursing tonight. So we appreciate you coming. Um, this is a little bit unusual. We usually like to see your smiling faces and talk to you in person, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm going to give you a whole bunch of information. I'm gonna go through some slides. And um, at the end, you will have the opportunity to ask us questions. Please type your questions into chat. Okay, here we go. So here's a basic overview of the program. Um, it is a four semester associate, associate degree program. We have a total of 65 credits. They're divided up into 35 nursing credits and 30 general education credits. And when you graduate, you are qualified to take the NCLEX RN exam. So that's the National Council Licensure Exam for Registered Nurses. So yes, you are eligible to become a registered nurse after you graduate from this program. We are approved by the Connecticut Board of Examiners for Nursing, and we are also nationally accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing. So Northwestern is one of six Connecticut Community College nursing programs, and we are a little bit unique in that we start our program in the spring semester. So we always start in January and we have what's called an accelerated format. So that means we actually have a full semester in the summer. So our students go straight through the summer and then they do the fall and the following spring. So you graduate in 18 months. We are a combination of an evening slash day program, which means that some of our clinical sessions are run in the evening, which can be anywhere from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. or 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., always dependent on what the clinical sites have available. We do also have day sessions, sometimes from 7 to 3, 6 to 2, so it really varies. So you will have two days of clinical throughout the program, and then also classes, one to two days of lecture, and they can start anywhere from two o'clock or so on. Um, and it's usually about five or six hours of lecture a week. So some of the clinical sites that we use are listed here. And keep in mind that a clinical site can be located up to an hour's radius, hour's driving time um, away from the college. So we use Charlotte Hungerford Hospital in Torrington, Waterbury Hospital in Waterbury. We use Gaylord Hospital in Wallingford. And then our first semester, we actually use long-term care facilities. So we use McLean Care in Simsbury, Gear Nursing and Rehab in Canaan, Valerie Manor in Torrington, and also Noble Horizons in Salisbury. So you can see that the sites really are all over the place. And um, I want you to keep that in mind when you're applying. Um, because you're going to have to travel there two days a week. The general application requirements, we're going to go through everything that's required. So if you want to apply here for nursing, you have to, if you're not already a student at Northwestern, you will have to fill out a general college application. And then every November, the nursing applications open up and um, you would have to complete that. You will need proof of high school graduation, uh, high school transcript if it's applicable, if you have any any college credits, um, advanced placement credits, anything that you earned while you were in high school. That all needs to be submitted. Your SAT or SA, ACT scores, any college or university credits that you've earned. A lot of our students have previous college credits. Anything that you've earned, you need to submit. And then there's also a standardized test. It's the test for essential academic skills, the T's. And you would need to take that before you can apply. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then also immunizations. Um, again, transfer credits. If you've taken college classes at other institutions, 
make sure that you have the transcript sent here and evaluated. Each college is different. I've had students who have had who have applied at other colleges and um, one of their courses, you know, transferred there as a certain course that was required. And then they tried to come here and found out that it, the course didn't transfer the same way to this college. So then that causes issues. So please make sure that you submit your transcript and have it evaluated at the college where you are applying. And the credits must be from a regionally accredited college or university and a minimum of a grade of C's required to transfer credits unless otherwise stated, which means that for nursing, your biology, your AMP1 and AMP2, the required grade is a C plus, not a C. Um, for high school graduation, you can submit a high school transcript, diploma, or a GED transcript, and you have to have the date of graduation or completion on there. The math requirement is you can sub you can submit your SAT score if you have a score of 550 or higher. That meets the admission requirement for nursing, but you still have to take a math class in order to graduate from the college. So um, you, any of these ACUPLACER or ACT scores will be accepted to make you eligible for nursing. But again, you have to take a math course in order to graduate. And for nursing, we are requiring right now that you take intermediate algebra or higher um, with a grade of C. In order to apply, again, you have to have an English English 101, which is English composition with a grade of C or higher. You also have to have one year of high school chemistry with a lab or have taken chemistry 111 um, with a grade of C or higher. And the science courses have to be within the last five years. So if you took a science class or chemistry 20 years ago, unfortunately, you'll have to repeat that. It has to be within five years of application. Anatomy and physiology one again, the grade has to be C plus or higher and it has to be within the fi past five years and it has to be completed prior to application. Anatomy and physiology two, same thing. You have to have a grade of C plus or higher has to be within the past five years. The only thing that's different is um, because the application deadline is February 1st. You can be enrolled in AMP 2 that spring semester when you apply. And you can be accepted conditionally based upon successful completion of AMP2 that spring um, with a grade of C or higher. I know I'm rattling off lots of information. Don't worry, write down your questions or send in your questions, and we can talk about that afterwards. Another admission requirement is that you will have to have a nursing GPA of 2.7. What that means is this is different than your college GPA. So this GPA is um, configured at the time of your application, and it's based only on the college courses that are required for nursing admission or within the nursing program. So what that means is a lot of our students, when they come into nursing, they have already taken all the non-nursing courses, the other courses that are required to graduate. So like microbiology, um, English 102, psychology, lifespan, um, sociology, and the humanities or fine arts elective, they've completed all of those courses. Any of those courses that you've completed will count towards your nursing GPA. And I put here that our average GPA of our accepted students is around uh, 3.34. And that, that information is probably a couple years old. It may even be a little bit higher. So it's pretty competitive, if, as you can see. Um, and again, every transcript from every college or university or any credit that you have ever earned must be submitted regardless if it applies to nursing or not. Let me say it again, because this has made students ineligible. And it's a terrible thing when we have to tell a student that they are not eligible because they didn't include all of their college credits, even those that were earned in high school. I can't stress that enough. The T's that I mentioned um, is, um, again, is a standardized test. So the standardized, the score is a 53.3, which doesn't sound very high, 
but our average score for our accepted students is a 74.4. So you can see that that's, um, that that's a lot higher than the minimum. And again, the test has to be within the last, ooh, I may have forgotten to change that date. I believe it has to be within three years. So that date is not correct. Applications are online only. So again, once November 1st rolls around, the application will be available and it's through my ComNet, which is the internal college um, um application i guess not application um i don't know what i want to call it software and um applica applications will be accessed through the self-service in my comment and you have to be a student at northwestern in order to submit your application here you can only apply to one of the six community college nursing programs so you have to choose which one you want to apply to and you have to make sure you fill out a um, college application at that institution and all of your admission files have to be completed and submitted by February 1st. And this is for the next application cycle will open this November. We just finished ours uh, for this year and um, it will close in February by February 1st of 2021. It sounds so far away. Here's, I already said this, you have to um, submit one application for the six nursing programs. And then you have to, as an applicant, I can't stress this enough, you have to make sure that you check communication in uh, the college email system because all communication goes through that. We've had students who you know, were notified that they were missing something or there was a question and they didn't, um, they didn't ever check their, their college email. And so they never knew that these were issues and they were ineligible for admission. When you're applying, remember, remember the geography of where you live and where you're applying, which program and the commuting time, not only to campus, but also to the clinical sites. It's important. All right, how do we pick who is admitted? So we use a ranking system. So basically we take 50% of your rank is determined by your nursing GPA, which is what I talked about. It's those courses that are required for admission or the program. And then 25% is your T-score and the other 25% is your anatomy and physiology one grade. 75% um, of all seats are given away based on rank and 25% are done, 25% are done through random selection. So those students who are eligible but didn't get a seat through ranking, they are placed in a lottery system and we will choose the other 25% that way. And then we also have a wait list. So anybody who didn't get admitted will be placed on a wait list and it's um, in order of their rank. And then if students don't accept, we'll take students off of the wait list. And we usually do have usually about 10 or so students um, that, um, that end up not coming even though they were accepted. This is the program of study. Um, so it tells you all the courses that are required and you can see here are the admission requirements. And then you can see the other courses that are required that are non-nursing courses. And those are the ones that usually students have completed before they start the nursing program. And we usually recommend that because the nursing courses themselves are so rigorous and take up so much time that if that's the only thing you have to focus on, it is much better as far as um, being successful in the program. So next steps would be for anybody who's already taken their prerequisites would be to apply to North, Northwestern. Make sure you enroll as a matriculated student. Rebecca Russo is our, our Allied Health Pathway Advisor. So she usually meets with all students who are considering going into nursing and are getting started or are transferring in. You wanna get started on completing your nursing prerequisites. You can log on to our website. And if you look under programs and nursing, it will link you to, uh, there's an info packet that has all this information that I just went through. There is financial aid available. And also for those of you who are first time um, college students, I'm sure you heard about the debt-free college. So you are eligible to come to the community college for free, but make sure you touch base with financial aid and find out what the requirements are. 
And then just, um, I know this is kind of um, thinking way ahead, but we also have, well, we have, if we have any LPNs out there, we do have advanced placement. So we have what's called a bridge program. LPNs can get credit for the first year of the RN program and can start in the third semester. There are a couple of bridge courses that they would need to complete and um, then they can transfer or, or they can um, transition right into the third semester. But usually I, I tell all the LPNs they meet with me if they when they get admitted and we look at the plan for them. And then also we have articulation agreements with all of these schools so that you can, after you graduate with your associate's degree and you sit for your RN license, you are guaranteed admission into one of these programs if you choose to go on and do your bachelor's degree in nursing. All right, now that I've said a whole bunch of stuff, do I have any questions? Well, hi there, I'm back. Jane. Let me, let me pop my video back on. Um, we have a question. What is the score for the T's and how old can it be? I believe it's three years. It has to be within three years. And the minimum score is a 53.3 that you have to have. But competitively, um, our students that are accepted, usually their T score is around 74. OK, how many applicants are accepted? Oh, good question. We take 32 students every January, and we usually get around 90 to 100 applicants. So you can see, even though we're a small school, um, we do still get a number of applicants, and we can only take 32. Let's see. Um, is there, oh, is there a part-time program available? Unfortunately, no. Once you're in the program, you have to take the courses along with the cohort and you have to take them all in the order that they come. So while you are, will technically not be a full time student because you're not taking 12 credits or more, if you've already completed the other courses, the, the non nursing courses, it is still pretty rigorous and we talk to all of our students and we know that our students typically have to work they have mortgages they have families that they have to support we do recommend that you try to work the minimum number of hours that you can possibly um afford to do because it, it it's very time consuming to do the two days of clinical plus all of the preparation for lectures and studying um it's it's pretty rigorous um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of pop in with a comment, guys, on that part time. It's so important to get your prereqs done and everything you would need to graduate. So your math and your English and your science, um, those you could do part time so that you have everything, you know, ready um, to jump in and give, you know, the nursing program your all. Um, and it really does help um to to be prepared for that because when you talk to our nursing students they love the program they're invested in it i came through northwestern i started as a medical assistant i went on to nursing um we you give up your life to to become a really good nurse and that's what you want to be so that's really important um, when you think about that part-time full-time so part-time maybe as you're working up to it um, but once you're there, it's it's definitely full time. And this kind of segues into a question of can I apply here and take prereq courses from another community college for the summer and then apply for the nursing program? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Um, you we have students who take courses all over the place and then um, apply here to Northwestern. But remember, if you don't have to apply here yet if you're not taking any courses, but when it comes time to apply for nursing in November, you have to then apply to the college at that point because you have to be a recognized student in order to apply for nursing. And one other little quick plug in here, which I do all the time with the nursing pre students. There's this really weird thing about the nursing programs in Connecticut. They don't recommend they don't require that you take medical terminology. 
But I think that if you're in healthcare, that kind of seems like an important thing to me. So that would be one thing that, you know, as you're starting, you're thinking about what you want to do would be a good thing to take over a summer class. And you have to take a humanities class. And another one that I highly recommend, it's under philosophy, it's called medical ethics. Because again, you're in healthcare, you're dealing with so many issues. Um, just look at where we are today with this pandemic and all the different things that have come up. Um, these are really two kind of important classes that you don't hear about. Um, so that's, that's kind of important. Um, and someone would like to know why should they pick our program over other Connecticut community colleges? You're looking at her. Your boss here, that head of nursing for this college is just amazing. But I'll let her tell you the other reasons why. Well, actually, it's not so much me, but I don't know if you can see Jacqueline Vincent, who is one of our nursing faculty, who is also one of our panelists. And it's really our faculty. That's the reason you want to come to this um, program. The other thing is that we are the smallest program. So there are 32 students. You will get the most individualized support, mentorship, um, attention and everyone trying to make sure that you are successful, you are not going to get this kind of attention at any other college because they simply can't. With 100 students, you can't give that kind of individualized attention. So that's why I think that our program is the best, but I'm also a little biased. And we have the best nursing instructors. They are all amazing. They've practiced, they know what it's like. They, they really, and they bend over backwards to help you out. But we have another question. One, um, in the, the uh, admission process, where do the students take that TEAS test? As in, you know, do they take it at the beginning, just before they come in? Do you, wh when's the best time to take that TEAS test? So that's a good question. I usually tell students, wait until you have had your chemistry and you are at least in, pro in the progress of taking your a and one because then all that science information will be fresh in your head. And the TEAS test is, it's a standardized test that um, it's administered by ATI and it's something that there are all kinds of locations all over the place that, that um, offer it. We do it at Northwestern. We usually offer a whole bunch of sessions in the fall because that's when everybody tends to take it before the application. And straight through January when everybody's really panicked because they want to take it before February 1st. So we usually offer a whole bunch of sessions, but it's all over the place. Um, most of the community colleges offer it and but definitely wait until you are in the midst of taking your science courses and all the information is is right there i did i do see somebody wanted me to put the slide back up regarding the lpns we're going to um email the slides to all of you so that you'll have all this information okay so you will get that information and you can send it to your friend the other thing you can do is go to our website and again, click on the academics and look for the nursing program and the information packet is there and that outlines the process for LPNs and the bridge um, program. Okay, we have kind of a, an interesting part me, part you question here. Um, on the how many electives are required to take, that's an issue partially of financial aid, which I hope you got to come in and listen to last night's session um, on the general um, idea of the college and how everything works. But a lot of times people will get financial aid and you have to take um, a certain number of classes to fulfill that requirement. So it, it gets a little tricky um, in that electives it's in of itself. Within the nursing program itself, you really only have the humanities elective, is that correct? Humanities or art elective, there's only one. Yeah, um, and then underneath this question was a question about certified medical assistants. Um, if you have been a certified medical assistant, um, you can always come back to the allied health side and brush up on classes, um, whether it's clinical skills, administrative skills, pharmacology, whatever you need. Um, and there are a variety of certifications that you can take, whether you want just the EKG tech, the phlebotomy tech, if you're looking to be a clinical um, medical assistant, there are a couple of exams you can take there. Um, and as long as you have 
um, the background and can come through our, our certificate side of the program, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, and yes, it's very different from the CNA course, right? So your CNA course is going to be on the non-credit side. Those courses are not applicable to going on to medical assisting or nursing. Um, and it's a different certification so that you're very hands-on in those long-term care and in the medical assistant, you're very much an outpatient, whether it's a physician office, whether it's a walk-in clinic, um, we have people in radiology, anesthesiology, but it's in that outpatient setting. Um, there's also, I see there's a question about, do we go to NCCC to become a CNA? And if so, how many semesters? Jane just mentioned um, the CNA training is non-credit. So you can do that. It's usually what, six weeks, Jane, I think? Yes, yeah. the course, and we do have evening and um, day sessions, and we have some sessions that are starting up over the summer. So the CNA is actually for anybody that's going into nursing and doesn't have any kind of healthcare experience. It would be great to take a CNA course. You're going to learn a lot of the skills that um, you also learn in your first semester. And Jackie Vincent can speak to this. The People who are or the students who are CNAs, they really kind of have a head start when it comes to that first semester in nursing. Jackie, anything you want to say about that? No, I mean, I definitely agree. The people who have that experience do have a head start. Um, but yeah, I just agree with what you said. I don't have anything further. Okay. So um, I again, if you go to our website, or we can, I can email you information about the CNA programs and it's under continuing education because that is a not per credit program. And I think the other thought too is a lot of times, yes, you're gonna learn everything you need to know in, in your nursing program, but it's that level of confidence. Um, if you've never, you know, bathed a, a, a patient, rolled them in a bed, even talked to them, um, been around doctors and nurses where you have to communicate professionally, being a CNA, being a medical assistant, doing these things are going to give you that confidence so you can really focus on the content that the nursing program is giving you to hone all those skills. We have a, I sent my transcripts in. Okay, so you're gonna um, uh, contact Rebecca. Um, are they calling in for counselors? Or emailing you? Some, they are doing some appointments, but also um, if you send your transcripts in, it right now there's a little bit of a delay because it, depending on if the transcripts were sent electronically or if they were actually mailed hard copy, because as you can imagine with this whole COVID situation, we have to have somebody go and physically go to the campus, retrieve the mail and then um, distribute it. So sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. Um, so, but definitely Rebecca Russo is the person that you want to contact and you can find her on our website. If you look, if you look under um, the staff, I guess, contact list would be the best way to do that. Um, and I'm sure she's going to kill me because she's listening, but she's not on. I am sure that um, Carissa, who is in charge of this entire project of getting us to chat with you, might have your emails and be able to send you this that link and that way we could send you slides or we could send you we do have these presentations um, so that we could send them out to you because there's a lot to think about and remember um, no matter what program you're going for. We did talk about that and Carissa says she will email out the slides and um, Rebecca's information is actually on one of the slides so you will have her email so that you can contact her. And I see that somebody else said, um, does it does it stay true with the courses for nursing that one hour of classes <laughs> is equal to two hours of work at home? What should I expect? Well, actually, it's three hours of work at home if you're taking uh, for every hour, right? Um, I would say definitely, especially for the lectures, you're going to be putting in a lot of work at home. And then for, I wouldn't say for the clinical, I mean, you're going to be doing 12 hours of clinical a week. So I don't know if you're going to be doing three times that many hours of preparation, but there is some preparation time. 
Jackie, I don't know. Is there anything more that you want to say as far as the, the preparation and what to expect? Um, no, just that we do often will have as part of your pre class, we'll have pre class assignments for both lab and and um, lecture. So kind of things that you'll need to get done that we have and we probably will still do in the future to count towards part of your grade. So I would say there is probably about, you know, I, that one to two, one to three ratio is probably correct in terms of how much time you're going to need to put into it. And it depends on the topic too. some topics as with every class are lighter than others. <laughs> So I see a question. Uh, let's see. You have the I was looking at the spring nursing classes it has a day and night on Monday and Tuesday. Do we need to attend both or just one of the two? Um, there's you know what? There are two different class cohorts right now. So we have our freshman cohort and then there's the seniors. So you're probably I think one of Jackie, right? You guys have class on one night and the seniors have class on another night. So that's I think, what, I think what they might have picked up on was the fact that in that nursing 101 class, nurse 120, we had labs that one lab was 7:30 to 1:30 in the day and one lab was 1 to 7. So typically we offer our labs. You'll in your first semester you'll have lab one day a week and we typically offer two choices, one day and one more evening choice. Yeah, probably. Okay, so we're we're kind of having a couple of questions back and forth um, also about, yeah, guys, use email, don't mail us. Um, think about uh, at this moment, take pictures of things, just you know, scan things. Be as creative as you can to get them in through email um, because getting the mail to the right people at the college is really, really hard at the moment. Um, so that's probably why if you mail things um, and you haven't heard back, that is probably what happened. It's it's in the COVID-19 pandemic lockbox at the moment. So think email, okay? So I just I just found out that actually we have not been able to pick up mail, physical mail for a couple of weeks now. So if you're sending stuff, try to try to send things either um, electronically, scan things, take pictures of them with your phone, email them. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of different times right now. We're all trying to make this work to the best of our ability. Um, somebody asked if it's okay to go ahead and start some of the non-nursing courses during the pandemic. Absolutely, because you can take a lot of your prerequisite courses now, um, especially if you have to take things like math and English, you can take psychology, sociology, all of those courses. Um, I would say if you are not at the point where you have to start taking your your sciences, hold off until we can get back onto campus so that you can have an on campus lab. Right now, the labs are for the summer are going to be online as well, which is not ideal. I don't actually think we're going to have any um, any science classes with online labs, so that is just. It's not an ideal situation, but I would say take any of the other courses that you can, and especially the ones that lend themselves um, to online. Uh, somebody asked, when can you register for the nursing class once accepted to the program? No, it's not during summer. You wait for the orientation which were we pushed it off until fall this time usually we do it in the summer but we're going to wait until fall just to make sure that we are all back on campus and then usually you don't can't register until i think november sometime is when or um, registration opens up october november and the thing i always tell nursing students everybody's always so eager to register for the class remember no one can take your seat it's only students who've been accepted who can <laughs> register so even if you register the day before, which no, you can't do that. You have to register by December 1st, but no one can steal your spot. Let's see any other good ones. How long does it take to complete the prerequisite courses? So it's a little bit tricky because it depends when you, if you haven't taken anything like no English or math, 
It depends on where you place. If you can go right into English 101 and intermediate algebra, it's going to take you about a year and a half probably to do the the um, the prerequisites because they're all sequential. So you have to take you know biology before you can take anatomy, and physiology, and you have to take AP one before you can take AP two. Um, I see James piping, so she's probably going to answer some of that too. So really, and it depends it depends on where you place as far as English and math. How long it'll take you, but I would say at least a year and a half. Unfortunately, um, yes, I'm actually just sending. Uh, we've got a lot of people asking the same question, so I'm just typing a. If you sent in any information, and you think it might have gotten lost, missed, it's in a bin somewhere, um, I'm just reminding you, and I'm sending a, it through the chat to email um, Rebecca Russo and just let her know it was sent in, and could she look and just tell you is it there? Um, you know, we're all trying to <laughs> do what we can do here. Um, the other thing about how long will it take? You really want to sit down and talk to your advisor because we can tell you that, oh, you need this class and it's offered only in the spring. Right. Or, you know, so don't skip it. Or we could say, oh, you know what? This is offered fall, spring, summer, winter intercession. We can sneak this one in whenever. So it's really very important to talk to someone who knows when these courses are being offered. Don't try and do the, this on your own. Have somebody chatting with you um, because it's really, really important. Absolutely, I can't emphasize that enough. You wanna make sure that you speak to someone at the college who knows about the program, an advisor who's familiar with the requirements because if you get off track, it could bump you out a whole year if you don't take the courses in the right order. And I see somebody asked if we're able to become registered nurses through this program. Yes, you are. This is an RN program. It's an associate degree program, but nursing is a little strange in that respect that you can be an RN, whether you actually go to a diploma school, which there aren't too many around anymore, an associate's degree program or a bachelor's degree program. So all of those lead to certification or licensing as a registered nurse if you pass the NCLEX RN exam. Good question. Um, you would, I, I would say you would reach out. Somebody's asking about speaking to an advisor before applying. Um, yes, I would reach out. Are you, a, if you're applying as a new student, you're going to reach out to admissions about applying. And then Rebecca Russo it will be the um, advisor that deals with all of our nursing, pre nursing, and allied health students. So I would email, I would email, email um, admissions. It depends on if you're already a student or not, or Rebecca Russo. And I'm always happy to advise anyone. Um, as you can imagine, allied health and nursing gets a lot of interest. Um, and sometimes we can get overwhelmed. So there's a group of us that are more than happy to help out. So Rebecca's gonna be your first contact. But if for some reason you didn't get through or, you know, you have a, another question, um, you want another opinion, um, I am always available. Um, I do WebEx, um, you know, advising now in our crazy pandemic times. And I have to say I'm on pretty much, they laugh at me at the college because I say I live in my office at the college. I'm there all the time. Well, now I'm on my sun porch in front of WebEx all the time. Um, but truly, I'm happy to help um, with anything you have. And I just put in um, my email as well in the chat box. And we'll make sure that when Carissa sends out the, um, the slides and the information, We'll make sure that all of our um, Jane and my and Rebecca's contact information is in there. So reach out to one of us. We're always happy to help students. I advise a lot of students. Um, you know, we talk, we talk a lot. Well, we talk now we email a lot. <laughs> we don't talk so much anymore. But I, I it's one of my favorite things is really meeting with students early on, talking with students who are thinking about going into nursing, then seeing them go through their prerequisites. They usually come and check in with me tell me how it's going, then I see them get into the program and then graduate. That's that for me, that's that's what it's all about. It's amazing. We love you all. You should see us. 
we go to graduation and we all cry. It's the truth. <laughs> Um, and you know, I know that these are these are special and trying times, and I I couldn't be prouder to be part of a profession that is, you know, really at the forefront of doing so much for for people and taking care of so many. And really, it's it's a privilege to be a nurse. I've been a nurse for 32 years, and it's the best decision I ever made. Any other questions? Speak now or reach out to us later. 